heart that hurts I want to spend my life Mending broken people I want to spend my life Mending broken people I'm Shelley Quinn, and we welcome you to 3ABN today. We're so glad you're joining us, and just want to take this opportunity to thank you for your love and your prayer and your financial support. Now, if you like stories about miracles, stories of beautiful music, you are going to enjoy this program. And we have some wonderful young people who are joining us today. But before I introduce you to our special guest, I wanted to take just a moment to share a scriptural thought with you and a scripture. And the thought is this, throughout the Bible, we see that God is a God of music. And when when consider what's going on in the Old Testament, you see that there are songs of praise, songs of thanksgiving, worship songs, when they would sing and the glory of the Lord, the Shekinah glory would fill the temple to the point one time they couldn't even stand up and minister because God's presence was there. And then as you go forward, we know that there were songs of war, there were songs for the various festivals that they had. We know that Jesus sang, and he, the, the Bible talks about him singing hymns after the Passover meal. Paul says, I think it's Ephesians 5.19, that we are to make melody in our heart and sing to the Lord. And then he says in Colossians 3.16, that we are to sing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. So singing is important all the way through to Revelation where we see the song of the redeemed and the song of Moses and the Lamb. But the scripture that I wanted to share with you is Zephaniah 3.17 because so many people don't know about this scripture. And here it is, Zephaniah 3.17. It's beautiful. The Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one will save he will rejoice over you with gladness. Now, get this picture. The idea of rejoice, the literal translation, would be to twirl around in circles. So think of the Lord not as sitting up on his throne, but as being so excited about you that he gets up and he, he twirls around rejoicing over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Is that your picture of our Father God? Is that your picture of God, that He is so loving and so intimately involved in our lives, and He gets so excited about us that He rejoices in heaven, twirling about singing? Well, song is important, and we're going to talk about song today. Let me introduce our special guests to you. We're going to begin with Craig Cleveland. And Craig, you are the music minister for the Michigan Conference. That's right. Tell us a little about what that means. Well, it means I have the exciting privilege of teaching at Great Lakes Adventist Academy and doing seminars and working with other schools in the conference and just doing whatever we can to see music be used in evangelism to win souls for Christ. Praise God. And music is very, an, a very effective evangelistic Amen. tool, isn't it? Amen. You know, we see here at 3ABN, uh, people call daily who are joining the church. And we want to thank you because your funds support this world evangelism. But we have had many people call who have been touched by a song and given their hearts to the Lord. And I know we've told this story before, but it was, it was particularly interesting when one crusty old gentleman called and he had heard Tammy Larson sing a song. Uh, and she's one of our, she's our jib operator. And she sang a song and he called in tears 
Anderson said that for all the preaching he had heard, it was that song that touched his heart. Amen. So music is a powerful tool. Yeah. Craig, I know that I've interviewed you a couple of times before, yes. not in the position, though, that you currently hold. So congratulations. How long has it been that you've been music minister for Michigan Conference? Been there for a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah. Well, welcome back. Thank you. Well, now next we have a pretty young lady, and her name is Bethany Neatling. And Bethany, you are a student of Great Lakes Academy? Yes, I'm a senior this year. A senior. Okay. Where Where is your home? I live in Lake City, Michigan. Lake City, Michigan. Yeah. Well, how many years have you gone to Great Lakes Academy? This is my second year. Your second year. Wonderful. And then next, we have a pretty young lady whose name is Jennifer Landis. And Jennifer, you are a task force worker for Great Lakes Academy. Explain to us what that means. Well, I just get to work as a volunteer at Great Lakes Adventist Academy for Craig Cleveland in the music department. And so I'm his secretary and a bunch of other things. I play piano and stuff like that. Okay, so are you a graduate of Great Lakes Adventist Academy? I am. I went there my senior year. Okay, okay. Well, we're glad to have you. Where are you from? I'm, I live in Owasso, Michigan. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. And then next we have Elisha Ringstaff. And Elisha, what grade are you in? Um, I am a senior at Great Lakes Adventist Academy. Okay, where are you from? Um, I come from Lansing, Michigan. Lansing, Michigan. Well, very nice. And then we have Nick, and Nick, your last name is escaping me just now, Nick Whitmill. Whitmill. Nick, you're also a student. What grade are you in? I'm a sophomore. Okay. And where are you from? I'm from Dayton, Ohio. From Ohio. Mm -hmm. Now, you've jumped the boundary here, the state lines. What caused you to go to Great Lakes Academy? Well, I'd gone to school all my life in um, Ohio, and it was really a God thing. My parents felt like it was time to change schools, and Great Lakes Adventist Academy, we'd known about it for years, and God just impressed us to go there, and He's led ever since, and it's been an amazing experience. Amen. So you said us. Is there another family? Yeah, member? my sister. She's a great older than me, Sydney. She goes there with me. Okay, wonderful. Or she probably tells the story a little differently. She probably says that you go there with her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, all right. Tell us, Craig, how was your trip down? How long did it take? Oh, we, it took a little longer than we had expected, but it's supposed to be about an eight and a half hour drive from Michigan where we lived. Why did it take longer? Well, it, you know, I just say, Shelley, anywhere you go with young people, and I just love my job. It's so much fun. There's always thrills and excitement. So we had stopped for lunch, and everybody voted for Olive Garden, and it's cold, and we're in southern Michigan. And um, we didn't realize that the company vehicle we were driving, the ignition key didn't work the door. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so we were locked up. How long were you locked out? Well, we tried for about 45 minutes to... It was an hour and a half. Hour and a half. An <laughs> hour and a half. To get it open. And finally, we got a tow truck to help us out. And they, the most... Ex well, you guys should tell the story. I, I mean... Well, we there was a hotel nearby, actually. So we were like, let's get a hanger and try to like unlock the door because we were just trying to be crafty. So we did that for about 45 minutes. And then we were like, had a door stopper also. We were like trying to pry open the door so we could get like the hanger in there. So it was interesting. But we finally gave up and called the tow truck and they unlocked it for us. But it was interesting. Uh, but <laughs> well, that was just the beginning because once we got it open, then the horn would go off and the, oh, the alarm no. system was going. So every time we'd stop to open the door, you know, the horn would go for a full 60 seconds. So. And the gas stations oh everywhere. It was kind of embarrassing. Yeah, we forgot one time and we ended up going there and then we opened the door and we're like, oh my goodness, not again. We thought it'd turn <laughs> yeah. off. But, but, yeah. but we have a plan. Uh huh. We found the relay switch, we unplugged the horn. But when we get home, we're going to tell them that we took it to 3ABN and it learned to sing and we're going to put the relay back in. <laughs> <laughs> How wonderful. Okay, so tell us, that we're actually talking today about the Advent Heralds. What Tell us who the Advent Heralds are. The Advent Heralds, we're, we're a team of, of video and music people in the Michigan Conference that have a studio for video and for audio. And we work with the Advent Herald Symphony and Singers, the group from Great Lakes Adventist Academy. Okay. And we worked with other young people. And um, our goal is to just produce evangelism productions and to go out singing the gospel story. Amen. And we're supported and, and run by the Michigan Conference. Amen. Now, you recently, and not too long ago, had a trip to Israel. Who wants to tell me about that? 
<laughs> Everybody's looking at you, Nick. <laughs> Come on, Nick. Well, we went there about nine months ago, and we were there for just under two weeks. And basically, all while we were there, the whole time we spent filming, and we had pre-recorded songs, and we filmed all those songs while we were there, and it was an amazing experience. With lots of different things that happened. So, mm -hmm. isn't this real beautiful? Yeah. 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 Did you all get to tour any of Israel? Yeah, part of it, the, what was amazing is we got to go to sites that we probably would have never gone to before yeah. if it hadn't been for the filming. Yeah. So I feel like that was an amazing experience because we got to see things that we would have never saw if we had just gone there for the tourism. Amen. Mm. Bethany, did it make the Bible come alive for you like it did for yeah. me? It's yeah. amazing to think that all of the stories that we read happened in such a small geographic area. But while you were there, tell us, uh, Craig, I think you had a little excitement that was going on. Tell no, us what happened. Maybe Bethany can start the story. We, tell, her, tell us about being in the Kidron Valley beside the Garden of Gethsemane at night. Yeah, that was really, I don't know how to really describe it, but it was like everything was like, it was black, like dark, and they had like the um, lightning machines going and so it was already I don't know kind of scary for me but then like this guy shows up and starts yelling at us and telling us not to sing about Jesus and he started to go and yell at Mr. Cleveland and yeah. okay so I assume this man was was he Jewish and he was upset yeah. that you were singing about Jesus mm -hmm. so you're filming Yeah, and it was a crisis moment and it's you know everything's at stake the guide came running through the crowd and and you know was trying to protect me from this man who's yelling at me and had been yelling at him and and um, I'll tell you in that crisis I just thank God that I paused to pray Amen. and I said Lord you know, we need this footage, we need this opportunity. And the guide saying, you gotta leave. The police are on their way, you've gotta leave. And I knew we had a permit to be there. We were doing nothing illegal, but I also knew that there are Christians, there are Muslims, there are Jews. But all the police are Jews. And you know, when you're singing about Jesus and there's a Jewish man who's very, very upset, the guide was saying, let's leave. But I knew we couldn't leave immediately, so I just prayed. And it was as if God just said to me, get two takes. Mm -hmm. I grabbed this, the mic spoke through the loudspeaker to our crew and said, look, we're going to get two takes. Pray that you can get what you need, and in two takes, we're going to leave. Took two takes. Everybody grabbed the gear. We had a quarter-mile walk up the hill, mm -hmm. and up the hill we went. And as we're loading the bus, what happened? Anybody else? Come on, help me it out. It was just crazy because, like, we're running up the hill with, like, our mini grand piano that's, I mean, it's a hollow, so, you know, you could pick it up. And with instruments and percussion and everything, running up the hill and loading on the bus as quickly as we can. And then right as we're, like, about to load in, like, the last of the gear, the police drive up. And we're like... Oh, okay, <laughs> they're here. But um, they were just like busy turning on their flashlights and getting ready to go down. And so we just slipped it in there and got in the bus and they never even saw us. Yeah, yeah. So they're right there, yeah. they're right there. Their lights yeah. flashing, they've come for us. We got this big truck and the bus, and we're loading everything. And the principal told the kids, get on the bus, you know, and we shoved everything how, in. How many students were with you? We had 40 students. Oh, yeah. Yeah. so this was a production. Yeah, yeah. 20, yeah. 20 crew. So yeah, we jumped in the bus we're, and uh, I jumped in the truck and we're zooming out of there and we're just like wow and our guide is just like ecstatic he, and to go down there we had to drive around the Kidron Valley so as we're driving around this loop you know he's driving he's looking down he's like yay this is better than cops and robbers I mean look there they are oh look at them they see the flashlight beams they're, they're looking for us all they're gonna find is the cleanest park they've ever seen <laughs> This is better than all the cops and robbers. And just then my phone goes, zzz, 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 and I'm getting message after message, and it's all from our business manager. And he's on the bus, and he's saying, do you have Ethan? Do you have Ethan? Do you have Ethan? Do you have Ethan? Do you? And over and over. And I'm like, well, of course, you know, Ethan's my son. And uh, he was a student at that time, and, and uh, he also ran the audio for us while we're on the trip. So I'm thinking, yeah, of course, he's here in the crew truck. And I'm looking around. No, Ethan. No, Ethan. And so I'm like, what? And I told her, no, he's not here. No, he's not here. And so our driver turns around. I'm like, no, don't turn around. The police are there. He's like, we're going back. I'm like, yeah, you're right. And then one of the other kids in the van said, okay. Your wife probably, if she hears this story, I don't know if she you was told there. her that. She was oh, there. Okay. Oh, yeah, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> so, don't turn around, uh, our son. You know, so, <laughs> so some of the students on the, on the tr crew truck said, he has a couple phones with him. So we called one of the phones, and he answered in a whispered voice. And he, he's like, hello. I'm like, where are you? Do you know the police are there? He says, yeah. I said, where are you? I'm hiding in the tombs. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, 
are you okay? He's like, yes, I'm with Mark and Brendan. I'm like, oh, good. I didn't know you were with them. And I realized, oh, yeah, we're missing other people. Too. <laughs> In all the hurry, we hadn't taken any note of who was there. We just, we were leaving before the police realized him. we were who they were looking for. And again, we had done nothing wrong, but our guide said, let's not, let's not risk anything. And truth be told, your guide may have um, erred on the side of caution because typically speaking, our experience, we've been over there five times, uh, five different years in a row. And we found that the police are usually, I mean, I, I can't imagine that this man caused such a ruckus because usually you don't experience that, mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting. Oh. But anyway, what a story. Now you have a song for us. And it's the that, song that we were filming. The right song that you were filming right then in the name of it is, it, it is, is finished. And so what a, what a great song to play just after telling such a wonderful story of escape from any possible problems. Here is the Advent Heralds singing for us. It is finished.
Outstanding. That's Christian education at its finest. Those were all high school students from Great Lakes Academy and Adventist Academy. We saw you there. How did you get a permit to film on top of David's Tower? It's a miracle. It's a miracle. And you know, God, so often in life, Shelley, we're walking along and we see doors closed and we're just like, God, why? What did you do? We had been there eight months ahead of time. We had gone to the police. We got a permit to film on the sidewalk in front of Herod's Palace. That was the best we could do. We came there on the day before we filmed to get that permit, which they told us to do. And they said, no, we have a marathon tomorrow. You'd get run over and killed. You can't film there. I, I said, well, but, but, but look at the paperwork. We were here eight months ago. We agreed, you know. And they said, sorry. <laughs> And I said, well, do you have any suggestions of what we should do? They said, go inside. Go inside. I'm like, well, that, I don't think that's, they said, go inside and tell them you're, that we sent you. So we went inside and told them we're school. Uh, the police told us to come inside and ask, and the Lord opened the door. And right. uh, for just next to nothing, they said, well, yes, we'd we'll be happy to help you in that case. And they, we had access to the whole of Herod's palace. We believe that, you know, no one knows exactly where all these things happened, but it's very likely that where most of that song was filmed was right in the praetorium where Christ was tried Amen. by Herod. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's, it's a miracle. That is a miracle. And wh what an incredible story, because I've never yeah. seen anything filmed from the top of that. We want to do another song that you recorded while in Israel, and this one is the very famous O Holy City.
great talent that is dedicated to the glory of the Lord. And we're going to tell you at the end of the program how you can get the projects. They've got a couple of projects out. And this one on the Israel trip, the story of Jesus is the name of their DVD that it's, uh, it is paired with the book, The Desire of Ages. But we'll come back and tell you how to get that toward the end. You know, Bethany, I'm thinking you were there during the spring rains. We've always been over during the latter rain in November, but you were there during the spring rains. Did you have any trouble with weather? Yeah, there were, a, I mean, we didn't end up having trouble, but there were a couple of times where we thought that the rain was going to come because we could actually like see it coming. And we just had to stop and pray and ask God for to stop the rain because if it rained, we'd have to like stop filming and it would just ruin everything. So. But every time we prayed, the rain would just either stop or go away. So oh, praise God. Mm -hmm. So you got it done. God just worked so many miracles there. It was so awesome. And just to see, like, where Jesus walked and get to walk in those same places, mm -hmm. like, it's always, it's made the Bible come so much more alive to me mm -hmm. now. Because when I read it, I'm like, oh, I know where that was. I was there. Mm -hmm. And to experience things like riding the camels, I realized what the wise men really went through just to see <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. It was not comfortable after an hour of her sitting on there. And just the distance that Jesus walked to heal one person. Like we would get, we would be like, be like, wow, this is taking a long time to drive here. And then I'd realize, wait, Jesus walked here. Like Absolutely. it made everything so much more real. Now, did you all go down toward the Dead Sea at all? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. good. So you saw the whole works. Nick. And much like Bethany was saying, every time there was something in our way, like the Lord really provided. I think of one time we were filming by the Jordan River and we had just gotten there and we were about to film and then we realized that there was this huge truck in our way, like where we were trying to film by because we were going over there where the singers were. And there was this huge truck and we were like, what are we going to do? There's this huge truck and we can't have it in our film, obviously. So we got all the guys and we were like, okay, we're going to try this. And we picked it up and we all moved it like in like less than like five minutes and it was amazing you and moved a truck yeah it was uh -huh. a huge <laughs> truck and it was just I don't know it was awesome and much like that anything else that happened like we thought that we couldn't do like God had a plan for us and it's just amazing to see that well that's mm -hmm. exciting mm -hmm. something I think is interesting Israel was great but um, what we're doing um, recently is a movement in the Michigan conference called unlock revelation 
allows us as students to go out in small groups and there was up to like three small groups per night of the Unlock Revelation series. So tell me out. a little more, what is Unlock Revelation? Is this a Bible study? Or are you going it's, out and singing? It's or? an evangelistic series going throughout Michigan, all the different churches preaching in their local areas. Wonderful. And as our music group, we were able to split up and up to three small groups per night were able to share um, the gospel through music. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so there were scores and scores of, of sites. And, it, you know, basically every church in Michigan was sharing the same gospel presentations. And so we would drive out from the school and support them with a you know, ladies trio here, a brass group there, a men's quartet over here, and then the next night a duet here and a solo there and a string group over there. And it was just thrilling to see how Amen. music brings in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And when the Holy Spirit and the Word are, are there together, hearts are touched. And you know, I think that's the reason for the order of our worship, to have, um, to have music, to, to soften up the hearts. It's kind of like it plows up the, you know, it, it tills the heart and makes it ready to receive mm -hmm. the Word. So yeah. to me, I think uh, ministry and music is extremely important. And mm -hmm. that's kind of exactly what happened, like, because at first I was like, okay, we're just, you know, going, maybe doing special music or something, but what ended up happening was they would, they would call us later and say, yeah, this guy came to the meetings and was so touched by your music that he like stayed for the message and he like listened to the message and afterward came up to us and just handed, um, handed us his pack of cigarettes and says, I'm done with this. I want to start Bible studies. Praise I'm ready God. to give my life to Christ. And another couple, like they had come to the meetings the first night and then hadn't come anymore, but we're especially invited again because we were coming to sing and they came and we're so touched by the music that they were like, okay, we're just gonna come after this. Like, and so they kept coming to the meetings afterwards too and really consistent afterwards. Praise and God. Let me ask you a personal question. When you came to Great Lakes Adventist Academy, anybody jump in, but was there anybody who you grew up in an Adventist Christian home and you always went to church, but becoming part of this ministry really helped solidify your relationship, a personal relationship with the Lord. Nick, you're shaking your head. That was your experience? I just feel like when when you see these things and like you see it and that's powerful, but also being inside of it and that's a lot of testimony to yourself, like seeing people give their life to Jesus makes you want to solidify your relationship with God too mm -hmm. because you're seeing how powerful it is. And I think mm -hmm. that's like with a lot of people in our group. So it's also amazing being part of it. It's also a real beautiful um, teamwork situation where you have the pastors of the Michigan Conference so busy in evangelism and just so eager. I was just at the ministerial retreat and they're all saying, you know, when are you coming? What can you do? You know, how can we? And they're buying, you know, hundreds of our productions because, and, and some of them are saying, look, we've given out hundreds of the story of Jesus. Now come and follow it up with the symphony and singers and do a, do a concert because we know that interest has been aroused. And we also have another initiative I would love to tell you about. It's called BibleStudyOffer.com. It works anywhere around the world, but it's especially in Michigan, and it's targeted at helping every church member get involved in giving Bible studies. Bible study offer dot com. Dot com. Okay. Yeah. And so we're that. able to have this music ministry where we focus on telling the gospel story in song that fits in hand in glove with the work of each church in Michigan. Praise God. Praise Something God. I think is really cool is. Um, most of us here are actually just students. We also have our studies to go along with. This is kind of an extracurricular activity at our school. So as students, when we get into this mu music ministry, many of these Unlock Revelation times were during the week. So we as students had to make up our work, work ahead, try to fit this into our schedule so then we could work for God as a side part to our school. But the amazing thing was when we were doing that, um, the studies kind of like started slowing down. We were able to do it much simpler and Nick and I were actually in a group together and just sharing at the different churches together was, was really amazing. So Elijah, do you have any idea what you want to do after you graduate? Yes, um, this next year I'm going to be going to Andrews as a theology major. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, the Lord's got his hand on you, I could tell. That's wonderful. So this is, this idea of using youth to evangelize with music, I think it's beautiful because you cut, you break down the barriers. People Amen. aren't expecting it. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, he just as Elijah 
was saying that the Lord blessed the young people as they dedicated a lot of time to evangelism. He blessed them in their studies. Mm -hmm. It was the same with the symphony and the singers. We had concert schedules and we had everything going on and we have, you know, you think of it, here's your rehearsal time and you come to rehearsal and you have three groups that are missing night after night. And they would go out on Monday and then we'd give them Tuesday to catch up on their homework and so on and so that we wouldn't see them again until Wednesday and then we had concerts on Friday. But the Lord is always the biggest God and those concerts were some of the most dynamic mm -hmm. and powerful and especially because here's the real issue. God doesn't need our our perfect notes. He needs our hearts. And when Amen. the kids were excited about what they'd been seeing in the messages, they excited about the conversions they'd seen, the people responding to calls, and they'd been involved in the evangelism, it was a group on fire. And we just praise God for the powerful effect that it had and the, the joy of amen. teaming together and amen. winning souls. Amen and amen. Yeah. So Nick, how about you? Have you got any idea what you want to do? I'm not really sure. You're not sure yet. You're a junior, right? A sophomore. Oh, a sophomore. Yeah. Well, okay. We'll, so we'll I'm not you. trying to get that far ahead. <laughs> you, you just keep praying and make yeah. sure. So what has been your favorite project? Uh, Jennifer, you've been here the longest. What's been your favorite project that you've been involved in? I think just the personal ministry, like with Unlock Revelation and, and going out to different churches at least once a month and doing concerts and stuff is meeting with the people because like they'll bring their neighbors and people and friends that um, maybe even aren't like Christian and don't really and so we get to sing about Jesus and it's so crazy to see them come up to you afterwards and some like even have tears in their eyes and they're like wow I've never heard anything like this before and mm -hmm. we even have students that get to share their personal testimony in between the songs, some of the songs, and it's crazy to see the effect that that has on them. So, I mean, I've enjoyed everything, but the one-on-one -on -one work with people has probably been my favorite. No, mm -hmm. we, we're also very excited. In April, we're going to be going into New York City. Mm -hmm. you know, we were invited to minister there in Times Square. And we don't know for sure exactly where we'll get the permit to be, but we have several different avenues we're, we're approaching and working with a team there that have done this before. And so we're really excited about that. We're going to, you know, sing our way down and sing our way back and we'll yeah. also swing by Washington, D.C. And visit the White Make State sure you so have on. another key that opens up the door. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. But it's, you know, we're excited because God is opening wider doors and we just want to minister and God keeps opening doors for us to share His good the goodness of his love in mm -hmm. music. Well, I know we've got two more songs that we want to play, and then we're going to come back and, and give you some idea, uh, some comments on how you can get some of their projects.
Outstanding. You know, we have some uh, several f here, uh, students from our area who have gone up there. We've got Abby Amen. and Danielle and Fair and Caleb. So, just shout out to them. So, tell us about your projects and how we get the project. Well, every song you've been airing today is on this project here, the story of Jesus. Okay. And this is 15 songs filmed over in Israel, and it's partnered with the book, The Desire of Ages. And this book is life changing. Amen. And so we believe that people should read the book, The Desire of Ages, and they'll be blessed. So we put it together, and if people want to buy it, they can go to our website, adventheralds.com, and, and order it. And or if they want to order them for their neighbors, we have witnessing prices. So if you order lots of them, they're much cheaper, or churches can okay. buy 100 copies for even less. So that's how that works. We also have another production, Let Freedom Ring. And this is patriotic music filmed in the eastern U.S. primarily and beautiful songs of hope and courage that all Americans resonate with well. But it's packaged with the great controversy, Praise God. which of course focuses on where America fits in prophecy. And again, uh, you can buy them single on AdventHeralds.com or you can get them in bulk or you can buy them in bigger quantities for churches and so on. We want to see all America understand how blessed our nation is and what special place it holds in prophecy. Oh, if, if, if only they would come to understand that. So you're working on some new projects as well. Absolutely. Tell us Absolutely. about that. We've just been out busy in the snow. Uh, we got snow in Michigan. I don't know. Guys, tell us about what, what have we been doing? Well, yeah, that was, we went up and we were filming more of a Christmas production coming later and we had fun. There was horses, sleighs. We all got on the sleighs, kind of fell off a bit. But <laughs> all together, it was great um, recording some um, Christmas songs and maybe coming recording some later as well. But it was a great time recording with everyone as well. The team has worked really, really hard. Uh, even just day before yesterday, we were filming again with them, and they've been very faithful to endure the cold or sometimes it's warm in the little churches. We also filmed a production uh, last summer, so we have several things that are in the hopper that will be coming out soon. Our next production, production to be released is entitled Everyday Heroes, and it features a 1940s beautiful baby blue Plymouth and the story between each song is done with young people driving that car around uh, southern Texas actually so please stay tuned to adventheralds.com you can follow us on YouTube Advent Heralds on YouTube Facebook uh, we'd love to have you stay with us or 1-800-975-1822 oh you should go into business <laughs> oh, that's a great voice for that we have just a minute well actually what we're going to do let me just right now we will go ahead and put up the address roll i i just believe many people will want to purchase some of these projects perhaps also as a witnessing tool to give to your neighbors or maybe your church would like to buy them in bulk and, and make this a project. Here's how you can get in touch with the Advent Heralds. The Story of Jesus DVD is a musical journey of our Savior Jesus Christ from the manger to the cross and back to glory. 
This beautiful project was filmed in 15 history-filled locations throughout Israel and will bring you many hours of enjoyment. Visit AdventHeralds.com and while you're there, check out their YouTube channel. That website again is AdventHeralds.com. You may also call them at 800-975-1822 or write to Advent Heralds, Post Office Box 68, Cedar Lake, Michigan, 48812.